we have some surprising findings for others. One of them is that in the forests around the world that we find that are sustainable, are either improving or not going down like so many, the users are active monitors of the level of harvesting occurring. The users themselves. This is basically what we found in the lab when they could communicate and um, monitor one another. They did a lot better, but we found it in the field. Um, when we've examined trade-offs and synergies between the levels of carbon storage in forests and their contributions to livelihood, we find a very interesting synergy. It's not that carbon goes up and livelihoods go down. There are times and places where they both go up, especially when the users can harvest and they monitor one another. Now, we're trying to develop a further theory. Uh, we reject the theory of rational but helpless individuals. And we are now working with many colleagues in the development of a behavioral theory of the individual. Going back to Herb Simon and his work on bounded rationality, uh, people don't have complete information, but they can learn through time. They use heuristics, but they update their learning over time. And they have norms. They do have some value for what others obtain that varies by individual. It's not uniform, but we had taken norms out of the individual for earlier times, and now we really have to be serious about it. And given that model, we find that learning to trust others is central. You cannot have a small, medium, or large, or very large governance mechanism that works over time when people do not trust one another. So we put the long-term uh, adaptive norm-using individual uh, as uh, what is affected by micro-situational and broader situational variables. And when uh, people are able to uh, achieve trust in others, they begin to engage in reciprocity and, and cooperation. And that produces outcomes. If they don't, the outcomes are bad, and so they, they go back and uh, repeat it again and, and don't cooperate. But if the outcomes are good and they see others are cooperating and trust is growing, this is cumulative over time, getting better, until somebody comes along and doesn't act in a trustworthy way. So at the micro situation in the lab, in the field, we find that when people can communicate, when there's reputation known, when there's a high marginal return, when people can enter as well as exit, when they have a longer time horizon, when they've agreed on sanctioning, all of these factors increase the likelihood that individuals will gain trust and cooperate. So it's not just one variable, but it's how these work together. And communication is very important, but it's gaining trust that is essential. When we go to a broader context, and this is something that many of us are now working on, uh, trying to develop a network of scholars from here and then uh, from other universities in the US and in Europe. Uh, we're trying to ad identify the broader variables and that is a long list and we don't have time for me to discuss it today. So we have more to do. Uh, we're not finished. <laughs> Some of my colleagues are, <laughs> are kind of <laughs> heavily engaged in this right now. So now let's just turn quickly to the idea of uh, reform and um, how does all this affect um, the uh, let's do better policy. And I think the important thing is that, again, I go back that users who have good fishery, lakes, inshore fisheries, water systems, forests, biodiverse pastures, etc., 
or other, other resources, um, have long-term interests, and they invest in monitoring, and they trust one another. Many policy analysts and public officials have not absorbed this central message yet. That's why I keep stressing it. <laughs> uh, we've looked at a lot of government protected areas and private ownership. There are some of those that work well, but not uniformly. And so posing it as the way, as some uh, scholars have, is just not appropriate. Another key lesson is that we must learn how to deal with complexity, not just reject it. And all of this over time has dealt with the notion of polycentricity, and we need small, medium, larger, larger, global. We need all of those levels. Uh, but how we structure them can be quite different and so let's not accept panaceas. And at this point, um, I have taken a long period of your time, so let me thank you. And I can also take a few questions. I think there are a couple of mics. I'm not sure where. <laughs>